Hey guys, it's your girl Aisha, aka Geek SX Chic, and we are back with another reaction to The Walking Dead. We are now at episode 14, which is called Look at the Flowers. Uh, for those of us who've been around this game for, since day one, we already know that that phrase has become a Walking Dead fandom uh, historical lore. It, it basically refers to some of the darkest and craziest stuff that Carol's ever had to do and probably a, a line that while sounds so beautiful comes along with a very heavy and dark price tag. So I do wonder what this phraseology means in this particular case, but I'm sure that the writers knew exactly what they were doing by using that iconic line. And so I am very interested to see where we're going to go now. Last week obviously was the last episode of Michonne. And uh, if you haven't already guys and you'd like to, please go ahead and click that subscribe button if you've come back and watched my videos before. I'd appreciate it if you became come part of the fam because why not? You're here anyways, you might as well hit that button, right? Without further ado, let's get into this episode and we'll talk about it afterwards. I'm going Lebo. Oh, he's back in his cell. Oh no, we're flashing back. Okay. I'm already on board, guys. Didn't know you had a say on the Kangaroo Council decide my fate. Kangaroo Council? Is that an official term? Stones on you. Right? She's like, before we get into all of the genital references. Could make things a hell of a lot worse for every man, woman, and child behind these walls. And despite what people may think of me, I am absolutely not down with that. Okay, Negan, I see you. Not dying. Look at her appealing to Negan's savior complex. Oh, Alpha, look at you. But ain't this a full circle moment? It's done. Right, like. I held up my end. Not going back. Oh, you was Carol. Oh, I'm so glad you took now to have a peaceful retreat, Carol. God, is there anyone she doesn't want to piss off right now? Seriously? Hashtag quit Carol. Where's Connie? I mean, welcome back, Magna, or whatever. Oh, I thought Eugene went to find his girlfriend. Does everyone need... Oh, oh. All right, because all right. I feel like people could just pass it on, but... It, Calm down, let the man finish a sentence. Mm-hmm. Let's hear him out before we jump to conclusions. The king has spoken. I struggled for a while. I buried myself in work and community. Okay, when we say hear you out, you we meant about the woman, not about your whole life story. But alright, I guess we got time. Or maybe look for Connie, but you know, whatever. Y'all just forgot all about her, huh? You got a bar. Ezekiel. Yes, friend. You made Jerry cry. I hate you. Still here? Hey, Halfa. Take off your mask. Dude's like, I was just trying to suck up to the new boss. I mean, where'd I go wrong? It's gonna make Alpha bite you right now. Go give her a kiss. Good move. I can't believe it took you that long. All right. Well, <clears throat> guess former management wasn't quite done with the position yet. Oh, just holding it like a creepy, creepy baby. Please don't kiss it. I did that. Team Nig in 2020. Oh, girl, where's your happy ass going? Carol. What? Wait, what? Why do you look nervous, sir? You're already done for. Oh, wow. Wow. Beta be hearing her now. He be speaking dead people now. I mean, this guy was batshit crazy before, but now I'm genuinely terrified. I don't know about you, but this bar sure looks dead. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, wow. He's got his own posters up. This guy's still a fanboy of himself. I'm sorry you're mad at me. Please don't be mad at me. 
That's about the kind of apology that Carol's been given lately, so go off, Alpha. Seriously, though, how are these walkers stealth nowadays? They be knowing how to sneak up on kills and stuff now. Is it wrong that I kind of like this version of Alpha? Hey, 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 behave yourself. We're not putting up with any horse nonsense after Rick. Okay, can you shh, shh, get off the, hold it, <clears throat> like that. Are you literally going to listen to your own music and drink? We're doing that. Okay, we are. All right, great. Awesome. Wouldn't it be funny if all the walkers actually started running away from that building just to get away from the album? Do you hear me, you empty-headed slick? Okay, you know, it's one thing to have a ghost in your head, it's another woman's disrespecting you. You stupid kids. <laughs> I want to feel bad for Carol, but I'm so ticked at her right now, I can't be. He's like, I had to have sex with her. You have no idea. Well, you really haven't smelled Alpha, have you? No one would like that. Wait, I'm sorry. This is really the most morbid concert I think I've ever seen, sir. Put your hands up in the air, wave them all around like you. If I did, I would imagine this is what it's like holding your baby for the very first time, except for it turns out. My baby can kill people by spitting bullets at them. Okay, that's a really graphic image of parenthood. You just had to be a dick about it, Negan. You just had to. Ah, I can't do it. No. You know who ruled with us? The man that built a kingdom. Yeah. You don't get to check out Zeke. We already lost one black person this season. We ain't taking any more losses. Really? Now we got combat crawling walkers? Are we serious right now? Is someone gonna drop from the trees next? I can't. This way, Fran. <laughs> Alpha's petty and I'm living. <laughs> Sophia, Lizzie, mm. Nika. Wow. Mm. Damn. Ezekiel. Okay, enough truth. Damn! When your own lines used against you. Yeah. This awkward silence. <laughs> They're not even looking at each other. <laughs> when I said that I liked it, I wasn't part of the act. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, we we know you now, Negan. It's been eight years. What about Carol? Carol's grown. She can find her own way home. I am not buying what you're selling, ma'am. Is she tied to the chair? What kind of creepy walker menagerie is going on right now? I'm just waiting for the creepy circus music to start. Oh no, not the man on the walker, no. I just wanna drive. <laughs> she killed the cop. Don't laugh, it is kind of funny. everything no oh my god hi whoa why are you screaming and why do you look like tank girl you should just be with her beta why don't you just look just give her a little kiss just a little toofy kiss y'all can be together in the afterlife <sighs> off to greet your adoring fans oh my god he put Alpha's face on there you whoa that is whoa Okay, y'all. Well, that was the latest episode of The Walking Dead, which was called Look at the Flowers, and we got our call back. This was um, a bit of a Carol episode, even though we had a few other things happen. This was definitely focused on her and I guess getting more insight into her thoughts because I think a lot of us are just a little bit confused as to where her head's been all this time. I know for myself, I've been very frustrated with Carol this season, just in the sense of not her purpose or why she wanted to do what she was doing, but 
just the complete and utter lack of regard for everybody else that she was hurting in the process. In this episode, we at least get to see that some of the Carol that we have seen and come to know and love over the seasons is still in there and it was represented by Alpha, the visage of Alpha basically taunting her and saying like, you know, you, you reason you don't want to go back is because you don't want to own up. What I look at when I see this whole arc with, with Carol, with the fact that she was behind this whole thing with Alpha, is there's an expression my mom always told me that was from an old idiom, an old Jamaican idiom, which is basically said, if you're going to, if you're digging a hole for your enemy, you need to dig two because you're going to end up killing yourself in the process, right? And so the whole idea is that when you go down the path of revenge, you lose who you are first and foremost, because you usually have to go to means and ways that are beneath you and are outside of your character to do that. But also you usually tend up, sorry, end up just getting this body count, like collecting a body count of all the people that you hurt on the way. And if you look at any great story that's ever been told, whenever there's been somebody who has been hell bent on revenge, by the time they usually get it, especially if it's been over a long period of time, you usually see that they have very few people left. It's usually just them. And in the end, you know, when we had Negan look at her and say, okay, well, there's Alpha's head. It's on the spike. Is this what you wanted? Like, does this make everything better? And she was like, yeah, it's what I wanted. But all of her friends don't trust her now. Some of them may never forgive her. I mean, probably a lot of them will, but you know what I'm saying. And she's here alone and she didn't even feel like, for at least over the first half of the episode, like she could ever go back and face them again. So it's like, was that really worth it to get this one head on a spike and potentially burn all the bridges of the friendships that you've had your, you know, for all this time that have helped you get this far? And we saw that. Alpha said that to her, like, you know, what if Daryl never forgives you? What if he can never get over what you've done? And of course, I think she's thinking about Connie in this case, right? Like if Connie doesn't make it, she's probably worried that Daryl may never forgive her for that. Now, of course, we already know that like Daryl is the eternal well of forgiveness when it comes to people, which is not a bad trait, to be perfectly honest. And again, Carol is not evil. We all know this, but I'm really glad that this episode brought out that she's at least feeling some sort of remorse over her actions, because as I said a few episodes ago, I don't believe that the ends always justify the means. And that's why Alpha also said to her, what are you going to go off by yourself like you did last time? Like remember when Rick exiled her back in season three, I believe it was, or four, I can't remember, one of them. She thought she could be out there on her own and she made it. It's not a matter of her not being capable of being on her own. We know that she's capable of taking care of herself, but um, as Scott Gimple said, you can't be alone in this world. Like it's not, you're not going to survive this world by yourself. You can't do it. Because even if you may physically survive, you're going to lose your mind. Probably like Tank Girl, like whoever the heck this chick is that they just run into in this city. Like, it's just, you need people. We're social creatures. We need to have connections in this life. Otherwise, we will die. Carol knows this. After she's lost so many people, they went down the list. I mean, Alpha was relentless, y'all. <laughs> they went down the list of all the people she's lost, all the people that she's opened herself up to love and sadly is lost, which is just a reality in this world. Checking out of life or thinking that you can treat the connections that you still have like crap, that's just not the way to go. And in that moment where the walker was trying to come at her and she was underneath all of her debris, she finally realized that the connections that she's made, Daryl, the people in Alexandria, all the people she's pissed off, they're worth going back and facing the music for and dealing with the repercussions with because she needs people. I'm glad that Carol finally had this realization. It sucks as I've said many times that she's burnt so many bridges and hurt people in the process, but anyone who's genuinely remorseful is, it's really hard not to forgive someone when you know that they're genuinely sorry, which actually feeds right into Negan and <laughs> Daryl. And uh, I really like the way they kind of played the scenes between the two of them. I don't think Daryl ever wanted to kill Negan. I really liked how Negan opened up to Daryl because it's just not something that, you know, Negan normally would just have a bunch of smart ass remarks, but he's been through a lot too, which we don't really like to think about because it's Negan. But, you know, he did go through quite a bit and hearing him talk about how vulnerable he felt being a prisoner all those years, being isolated away from anyone who really had anything but disdain for him with the exception of Judith, really. It was really cool to see that introspection on his part and the realization that he was like, 
I actually do care about those people. Like, even though they didn't care about me, I actually did care about them and their welfare. And I'm not this completely evil person anymore. And I kind of, all this time in that cell really helped me to realize that he wants to start over. And we saw that in the flashback with Carol letting him out of the cell and basically saying, if there's any chance for these people to see you as anything other than the guy who bashed Glenn and Abraham's head in, you need to do something that's monumentally good and going to really make a huge impact and killing Alpha. There's still gonna be some people who are never gonna really get over it. I think Aaron's always gonna give him a side eye, but at least it would give him the beginnings of being able to live without people always trying to take his head off or maybe always assuming the worst of him all the time. I thought that was a cool moment. I do think there's gonna be kind of a bit of a camaraderie between him and Daryl because I think he now has a respect for Negan for going through with this plan and staying true to it and not backing out because he really could have just decided to defect at any point. Outside of that, yeah, we had the big reveal at the end of after the long journey of the three, uh, com the three amigos, <laughs> uh, Ezekiel, um, Yumiko, and, uh, uh, God, what is his name? Eugene, sorry. They went on their, their track and obviously with the hilltop being gone, all they've got left is Alexandria. So they had to make this track even besides Eugene's booty call. They really did have to start looking into potentially anyone that could help them out. And it was really weird seeing the creepy Walker menagerie with them all like being tied and like filling out these weird lifelike sequences even though they were dead was both hilarious and extraordinarily disturbing at the same time. Seeing this girl who literally looks like a comic book character, which I know she is, but you get my point. Like, she looks like she's straight out of an anime. I'm very interested to see whether or not this chick is really a friend or a foe and how sane she is. I don't know if this is the person that Eugene was talking to because she definitely seemed a little bit more grounded. But who knows, maybe she's part of a larger group, but I am very interested. It's been a minute since we've seen new people that weren't evil and hopefully this chick isn't. So I am definitely looking forward to seeing where that goes. So what did you guys think of this episode? What do you think this new community, if it is indeed a community, has to offer? How did you feel about all the weird Walker menagerie, what do you call them, tableaus that were set up everywhere? And uh, how do you think people are gonna deal with Carol now that she decided to come back home? Please leave all them thoughts and comments below. You know, I love reading them and getting involved in that conversation with you. And if you like this video, guys, please click like. And if you want to see more from this geeky face, please click subscribe. And remember, please stay safe. Love y'all.